Coming up on today's show, in a crazy turn of events, Ben Simmons is back with the Philadelphia 76ers, and according to reports, there are several teams still interested in trading for him. During a conversation over the summer at Rich Paul's house, Doc Rivers had said to Ben Simmons and Rich Paul, it's in your fucking contract to report to the team. Daryl Morey is still interested in a James Harden trade. But before we get to all of this, subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. We are 42 subscribers away from 2K. Smash that subscribe button down below. Welcome into Philadelphia 76ers now by Chat Sports. I am your host, Chase Senior. I hail from the Philadelphia area, so show some love to the channel. Coming up on today's show, yeah, we're talking about these new Ben Simmons reports, rumors, also Daryl Morey interested in James Harden, as I mentioned. But let's get you caught up with everything going on on the Ben Simmons front. So he arrived on Monday in Philadelphia outside the Wells Fargo Center, unannounced, to take his physical and his COVID test. Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN reporting that Elton Brand had received a text that said, Ben Simmons is outside waiting to get into the building. Classic Ben Simmons move. Simmons is going to start working out in isolation with Sixers coaches today. The earliest he can rejoin the team is on Friday because of these COVID protocols across the NBA. So looks as though Ben Simmons at some point over the next couple of days is going to rejoin his Sixers teammates as well as this organization. Cue up the awkwardness. Now there is a new report from Jake Fisher of Bleacher Report who is closely tied to this organization, wrote a book on the Sixers. So I take what he said with stock. Here's what he had to say in his most recent story. Maury and Doc Rivers met with Ben Simmons on Tuesday at the team's practice facility in Camden, New Jersey. It was the first occasion Simmons himself communicated directly with Philadelphia personnel since the president and coach, along with general manager Elton Brand and managing partner Joshua Harris, met with Simmons and his agent Rich Paul in August at Paul's Los Angeles home. He has now resumed responding to phone calls and text messages from Sixers personnel for the first time in well over a month. Dating back to those combined dialogues, Philadelphia was adamant in its plans to withhold Simmons' pay for not complying with the terms of the five-year, plus million dollar contract agreement he signed in July of 2019. Later at Paul's home, Rivers even shouted, it's in your fucking contract to report and play for Philadelphia, sources told Bleacher Report. I would pay a lot of money to be a fly on the wall inside those meetings, both at the Sixers facility when Ben Simmons had met again with Daryl Morey and Doc Rivers, as well as at Rich Paul's crib, because the crib is probably worth a few million dollars. But also, I just would have loved to have been on hand to hear the conversations going back and forth. And what were those conversations like on Tuesday? Hey, Ben, how's it going? You haven't reported to training camp yet. Glad to have you here. We're happy to have you back. You haven't responded to any of our text messages or calls for a few days, even a few months and weeks. Yeah, did you know that Joel Embiid, Matisse Thibel, Tobias Harris wanted to fly a private jet out to Los Angeles to come hang out with you to try to convince you to come back to the team? Yeah, you didn't respond to those text messages or field those calls either? By the way, the Sixers fan base... They're really, really fired up about what's going on between you as well as this organization. Before we continue to unpack all of this, get into the comment section right now and answer the bell. Will Ben Simmons play for Philadelphia this year? Type P for play, type W for won't. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's video. So if you get hit with that YouTube ad break, scroll on down and get your votes in. Embiid did talk about Simmons coming back to the team, and this is what he had to say earlier this week as well, when there were reports of Simmons coming back. I still can't believe that he just showed up to the arena, and he's like, hey guys, I'm here, haven't talked to you in a little while, but I'm back. Yeah, when you get fined a million dollars and the organization withholds eight million from you, yeah, you're probably going to come back to the team. Embiid said this, that is good for the organization, that's something everybody wanted. I've always said that I believe he gives us the best chance to win. We are a better team with him than without him, that's for sure. I'm happy that things have resolved and we can move on to try and be a better team. Personally, I haven't talked to him since the season ended. Obviously, I tried, but it wasn't as successful as a lot of my teammates. 
Like I said, it's unfortunate the whole situation happened, but like I say, we are a better team with him on the floor. I think there's going to be some adjustments, but it doesn't need to be awkward. I mean, we are professionals. We want to win. I want to win. So he gives us the best chance to win. So that's what I'm going to go with. And Embiid has a point here. With Ben Simmons on the current construction of this roster, the Sixers are a better team with Ben Simmons. He's a first-team all-defender. I thought he should have been the defensive player of the year last year. This is a team that did lock down the number one seed in the Eastern Conference, a very competitive conference last year. So I do think that the Sixers going into this season with Simmons on the roster, healthy and playing, are better than without him. Now, I do think they're plenty talented enough to survive without his services if he doesn't join forces with this team for a little while. But in the long run, they're not as good as they are without Simmons. Now, if you trade him away for another all-star caliber player that fits well and better alongside Embiid, then yes, I think the Sixers could be better than they are with the current makeup of Simmons on this team. This is all classic Ben Simmons behavior. He is somewhat ignorant. He's somewhat delusional. He has never had accountability for the mistakes and flaws within his game that has kept this franchise back from making deep runs into the playoffs. And there have been a lot of people out there who have said Ben Simmons is a celebrity first and a basketball player second. He's really flaky. And I'm thinking about it. Like, who's the flakier player? Kyrie Irving or Ben Simmons? There really isn't a huge argument there. The point being... You never really know what's going on inside the head of Ben Simmons. Now, if he's been going through some mental health struggles, I certainly understand why he needed to get a breather. He needed to take a step back because that stretch that he went through on social media after that second round series against the Atlanta Hawks, probably the most brutal stretch that I've ever seen an athlete go through on social media. But when your teammates are reaching out to you to try to help you, to lend you a helping hand, when the organization says, we want to welcome you back with open arms, Respond to the texts and respond to the calls. Don't be stubborn. Don't be ignorant. People are trying to help you. It's very, very easy and very, very simple to just respond to a text and call. They're trying to help you out, Ben. Given what I said, do you think Ben can repair his relationship with the organization as well as the fans? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Producer Jeffrey Cooperstein, he's been rooting on the Dallas Mavericks for a long time. He said, hell no. I'm prob probably typing my N for no as well, but who knows? Maybe it can be salvaged. Today's Sixers Now is presented to you by our sportsbook partner, BetUS. This is the best deal that any sportsbook has to offer, and it can be applied regardless of what state you live in across America. If you go to chatsports.com slash bet, enter the promo code chat125, you get a 125% deposit bonus. So you put $100 into your account, you get $125 back. NBA Defensive Player of the Year odds. This is a future bet that I kind of like because I'm looking at the guy in the fifth spot there, Joel Embiid, very, very good value. He has said that it's one of his main goals to be named Defensive Player of the Year. I think he's a better defensive player than Rudy Gobert. Ben Simmons may be more valuable because he guards all five positions as compared to maybe one or two with Embiid, but eight to one odds for Embiid to win Defensive Player of the Year. Lay that money down. Be bold with it. Chatsports.com slash bet. Enter the promo code CHAT125 for that 125% deposit bonus. Going back to that Jake Fisher story, there are a lot of teams still interested in a Ben Simmons trade. Cleveland Cavaliers, Detroit Pistons, maybe including Jeremy Grant in a potential deal. Houston Rockets, they have a lot of young pieces and some draft capital. Indiana Pacers, maybe Malcolm Brogdon and Karis LeVert. Minnesota Timberwolves, a couple players on that roster who could be appealing for Daryl Morey. Portland Trailblazers, Damian Lillard, C.J. McCollum, Sacramento Kings with De'Aaron Fox. San Antonio Spurs, I don't like any package that they can put together because it would surround and hover around DeJounte Murray. Not good enough to get back for Ben Simmons, in my opinion and then the Toronto Raptors as well. So you're looking there at nine teams, according to Fisher, who is still interested in a trade for Ben Simmons. But there's also this, that Daryl Morey, who's been known as a wheeler and dealer since being the general manager of the Rockets, now the Sixers, he has made the most trades and the most moves of any general manager or front office executive across the league. And Stephen A. Smith said yesterday on first take, Daryl Morey still kicking the tires on James Harden? What? 
More, uh, Stephen A. saying this. Now, you might lose James Harden because Daryl Morey is lurking in Philadelphia. Don't think for one second that Daryl Morey ain't trying to get his hands on James Harden. I'm telling you what I know. And if Morey can somehow get James Harden for Ben Simmons, it would be a massive, massive trade for Philadelphia that would send ripple effects across the entire league. 24 and a half points per game last year, shot a little less than 47%. He is basically a walking triple double or at least close to that any given night. He'll dish out around 11 dimes per night and bring down a little less than eight rebounds. Now, Daryl Morey was very close to pulling the trigger for a Ben Simmons, James Harden trade last year. But I don't think it's realistic this year because of the uncertainty with Kyrie Irving right now. Sean Marks, general manager for Brooklyn, saying yesterday that Kyrie cannot partake in any practices or any games until he gets vaccinated and can be a full participant. So if you're Brooklyn, you might be without Kyrie this whole season, right? That's realistic if he doesn't get vaccinated because he's not going to be able to play or practice. So if you don't have Kyrie, you're not going to trade away James Harden because then it's Kevin Durant and Ben Simmons on a team. I'm not sure that that's a roster capable of winning a title. Who knows, though? Crazier things have happened, and we do know this. Daryl Morey loves himself some James Harden. So Sixers fans, before I get out of here, who would you pick? If you had to take one to pair up next to Joel Embiid, would it be Ben Simmons? Would it be James Harden? Type BS for Ben Simmons. Type JH for James Harden. I was against a James Harden trade last year. I'd probably be all for it this year. So I'll go ahead and type my JH.